Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Award Show and owner of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I am delighted to be joined by Emily Ackland from Serenity Welfare, who has just won the Best Businesswoman in Children and Families in the Best Business Women Awards. So she's going to share some information about her business and her business journey and what this award actually really means to her. So welcome, Emily. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie. This is a this is a true privilege. So thank you again for inviting me. Emily, we met on awards night and you were obviously on an incredible high. <laughs> and I'm sure you're still riding a high. Now. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us more about what Serenity Welfare does and a little bit about your business journey. What brought you to Serenity Welfare? OK, so we are a children's welfare service for looked after children who are in care and out of care as well. And um, predominantly, there are seven divisions to the company. So we securely transport children and young people in care from care home to care home or from court. But what makes us so different from other providers is that we securely transport children in prestigious cars. Um, so we have a fleet of Mercedes and Jaguars and we give children goodie bags and blankets and cushions, whereas um, they are usually transported um, and can be transported, unfortunately, the high risk children and young people in handcuffs, unfortunately. But um, we also have a mentoring division. We have a legal division that represents children in court. Um, we also have a crisis intervention division that looks after children 24 hours when they can't be with other young people for safeguarding reasons. Um, we do 24 hour suicide watch. Um, we have talks on gangs and county lines. Um, and um, yeah, so there's quite a few divisions there. I can tell you wow. we do a lot. That's um, amazing. So yeah, tell it's me. Amazing. So everything about nurturing, it's a very humanistic approach. We're all about transforming lives and helping as many of our vulnerable children and young people in society. So what's your background? Tell me what made you, you start. So it's quite a journey, I can tell you, but um, I've actually come from a construction background, believe it or not, nothing of social care at all. Um, I had a very successful career for 25 years in construction, um, and I was project directing a lot of buildings here in the UK and abroad, um, and making sure that they were being built to the specifications and the standards of um, construction standards. So... Um, I then was posted to Africa, uh, to Mali and Bamako for two years on a government project towards the end of my working career in that industry. Um, and we were knocking down mud shacks in the villages and building social housing with proper sanitation, which was so rewarding. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, it was absolutely amazing project. Um, I then came back from Africa um, and very suddenly, unfortunately, my sister passed away of a heart attack and she was 35 at the time. And that set my journey to serenity because she left us two children at the time that were seven and 10, my nieces. Mm -hmm. And um, the husband had left her five years prior for her best friend. So I think she died of a broken heart in the end. But um, he then came and he kidnapped the children to North Cyprus straight after she died. And um, while all this was going on and I was working with the Home Office to try and get the girls to come back, um, eventually the girls did come back. We had a custody battle um, and my mum and I won full custody of the girls. Now, while all this was going on over a number of years, um, somebody who worked in social care said to me, Emily, you're a really good businesswoman. You need to look at um, children in care because what's happening is that they're being transported in handcuffs. And this is how it started. And she worked for social services at the time. I remember saying to her, I really don't know anything about this industry because I don't come from this industry. And she said, but you do really, because if it wasn't for you and your mum, those girls, your nieces would have gone into care and they could have potentially been one of these children that would have transported in handcuffs. And it was like somebody had switch the lights on in my head. And I said, okay, give me time. Let me research it. It took me literally four years to set up Serenity by researching and, and um, sort of studying it. And um, eventually in November, 2016, we launched Serenity Welfare. And I vowed that we would never ever handcuff 
young you know children or young people and we would restraint would very much be an absolute and utter last resort um, and that we were going to transport differently so my chosen vehicle manufacturer was Mercedes for prestige and for their safety element and we started off as a secure transport company and have expanded quite substantially in five years to become sort of a complete welfare service for children in care and out of care because we do a lot of mentoring for school young people in schools as well so yeah and here we are basically <laughs> so what you mean five years down the line nearly six now so what's yes what's been the challenges that you've faced along the way would you say maybe just talk about a couple of main challenges okay i think one of the main challenges are a system that's very broken unfortunately mm -hmm. in this country so we're dealing with a very difficult system um we're very much ahead of our time in the way that we are trying to be humanistic and trying to engage with these young people and trying to in, you know implement early intervention to try and stop our vulnerable children in you know being groomed into gangs or whatever the case may be so I think the system in itself has been highly challenging. Social care has been challenging. And I know there is a social care review going on at the moment across the country. So hopefully, you know, they will come into the 21st century eventually. Um, I think that's been one of our major challenges. I think, um, you know, building a, a strong team in any business is a very big challenge for any CEO is finding staff obviously that's <laughs> um and you'll get good apples and bad apples as i call them but that's you know that's that's a big challenge but i think once the company becomes more established and people know you more you tend to have good quality you know members of staff that gravitate towards you that want to to work for you so that's you know that that's also been a challenge so but you know we're getting there slowly but surely <laughs> fantastic and um, have you got more plans in the pipeline and things that you're developing yes there's a lot more so <laughs> you know we've, yeah we've got a huge vision so we've got um we've got a children's home a very small children's home that's opening soon oh because again God. we don't yeah we don't believe in large institutional children's homes we're going to deal with two young people at a time get them to a better place teach them independent life skills you know deal with their um, emotional well-being a mental well-being get them to a better place like you would your own children move them on and the next two will come we've also look at building um, a school at our head office so we've got a very large head office here and we're looking at a very small school for our children um, we're also looking at a respite center um, abroad so we'd like to take our children um, and young people abroad once a year just to broaden their horizon and and do some holistic um, therapy with them so yeah there's a lot there's a lot going on so yes wow so from yeah. construction to work yes. with children yeah but it has transferable skills you it see does, it does really it? does have yeah. transferable skills yeah Ooh. yeah and you presumably with your leadership training when you were in the construction industry you've been yes. able to transfer those skills into absolutely absolutely and of course in construction as well you know building sort of constructing the children's home designing the children home home that's all being transferable skills going through the planning applications for change of use and building regulations so these and health and safety so yeah there's lots of transferable skills there which is wonderful and do you have many competitors in your industry Yes, we yes. do. We have quite a few competitors, although I have to say nobody, no other competitor um, is a complete welfare service like ourselves. So they either do one or the other, but they don't do the seven divisions like we're doing currently in the UK. We're, we're the only one. So that gives you uh, definitely a competitor, competitive edge, doesn't it? That you it does. all of this under one roof. And that Absolutely. was your vision, presumably. Yes, you it was. Together. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We have lots and lots of social um, local authority clients, sorry, around the country, up and down the country, because we cover the country nationwide. So, you know, whereas we only started to work for several um, in the five years, five years ago, we now work for over 100 uh, local, well over 100 local authorities up and down the country. So, yes. Yeah, which is great because we're reaching more children, young people yeah. and having an impact, which is wonderful. That is incredible and that, yeah. that you've grown the business to that level in that short yes. period of time but not only the business it's about your reputation yes as well yeah yeah um 
So awards. Um, yes. What was the strategy behind business awards and what made you think this might be a good opportunity for you? So um, I was asked actually by, and, and I never really put myself forward, but I was asked by other colleagues to, to, to enter, obviously, because they thought that, um, you know, firstly, I deserve the recognition, but secondly, you know, I think we owe it to the company and the children we serve to be recognised for the good work that we're doing. And um, that was one of the main reasons why um, that we entered, obviously, the Best Businesswoman of the Year Award. But I think I think more than anything, what's really important to recognise is that it's not just about yourself yeah. um, as a businesswoman. It's about your whole team, obviously. So I see it as we have all won rather than just myself. Yes, I may be driving this bus, you know, as, I, as they say, but, you know, this is a collective effort. So, yeah. So it was a great it's a wonderful, night. It's a wonderful privilege to win. Overly overwhelmed with it, completely overwhelmed to, to win this category of children and young people, you know, uh, young families category. Amazing. Well done. So I really want to talk to you about some other things that you're um, also nominated for. So tell us more about the Queen's Enterprise Award. So you've gone in for yeah. that as well. Yeah, so we've been we've been um we've been entered in and nominated for the Queen's Enterprise Award. Um, which is another amazing achievement, obviously. And I, we will know about that award in, in I believe, in November um, this year. Uh, we've all, I've also been entered into um, the MBE Award, for the, the, the Queen's Honour Award, obviously. Um, and I know that there is a backlog from what I can understand. So we are still waiting to hear about that. Um, I'm also, we've also been a finalist for... Children's Champion Award for Children and Young People Now magazine, which is an industry recognized magazine. So we will know about that, um, whether we've won that award. Um, I know we were a finalist um, on Friday this week. So yeah, which is wonderful. So, so yeah. although you, you had an experience of awards in your previous industry in construction, yes. this, this year is kind of the first year you've dipped your toe into the awards water. Yes, everywhere. yes, yeah. five years, yeah. Yeah, so Trading. you've been bitten by the bug a little bit. Do you think you'll look yeah, I think next so. year? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think, I think um, yeah, it's very humbling. And I think any person that, you know, thinks that they can't win or, you know, it's not possible, you can't reach to win, you can. And I think the thing is, is I think people need to take inspiration from, you know, the work that they're doing and recognise, you know, some people are very humble and don't want to be recognised or some people think, you know, well, you know, there's lots of amazing other women out there. But actually what everyone is doing is probably amazing. If you believe in what you're doing as a business and you have passion and you really do believe in it. And the important thing is, is obviously never to give up. That's the important thing. You know, if, if you're doing it from heart, um, you will win in the end. That's what I believe um, in, in, in business. So, you know, um, because not only are you serving yourself, but you're also, you know, giving, giving a, you know, um, a life to your staff. And those staff are, you know, paying their, you know, looking after their children. And, you know, this is a whole great big family, if you think about it. So I know for myself, we, you know, if you look at it, you know, it's not just our, you know, 50 or 55 staff, you know, there's over 200 people that feed off this company. So this is the type of thing that, you know, is quite inspirational. So anyone that's thinking of, you know, possibly, you know, should I enter or not? I think you all should attend, you know, um, you know, definitely attend the awards and, and put your, you know, applications in because I think, you know, everyone's a winner. And, you know, if you win it, then great. You know, but at the same time, you you know, you know that you're all doing a good job. So yes, definitely. So I think that should. Emily, if someone's listening to this podcast and you know they might be finding their business a bit tough at the moment, um, what kind of gets you through tough times? What what advice could you give to somebody? I think you've got to somehow take a break. And I think what we don't do as business women, because we're such workhorses, because we're always trying to prove, 
you know, our, our, our gain in society, aren't we, as women, always. Mm. Every, every woman, I think, is the same. It doesn't matter what industry or what civil servants or whatever industry they're in. I think the important thing is, is you take your break and you reevaluate everything you're doing in that break, whether it's, you know, you take yourself away to the Lake District for a couple of days or whatever the case is, you know, everyone needs a break just to reevaluate what you're doing. And actually, like I said to you, I think, if you truly believe in what you're doing and you know that it's, you know, that it, you're doing a good thing and you're running the business, you know, from your heart and you really know what you're doing. I think the important thing is, is just, you know, be patient, <laughs> reevaluate what you're doing, look at the good things of what you're doing, because there's always challenges every day. There's challenges. Um, and then come fresh because you always do come fresh once you've cleared your mind. Um, and, you know, carry on just keep carrying on because you will you will succeed you know it will be become successful like I said if you are truly believing what you're doing and have passion for it so yes so you strike me as someone who thrives off a challenge would you say that's, yes. that's you to a T? <laughs> yes <laughs> well yeah because what we're doing is trying to change a whole industry so you know what's really important is is what we're doing is you know we're trying to change a whole industry so we've got this handcuffing campaign that we're currently running um in parliament and i'm off to parliament next month to see if i can change the bill to, to stop children and young people being handcuffed in secure transport um, we have 26 mps backing the campaign and five house of lord members and i'm determined to get this banned um Mm. Uh, you know as, as a government legislation and restraint for children must very much be a last resort and must be um you know it must be um at least recognized in, in the state that they must you know acknowledge the fact that they have restraint and it must you know there must be a very good reason for it so we are we have got this very big campaign called hope instead of handcuffs so this is currently happening so yes i do like a challenge and you know i vowed very early on in serenity to try and do something about this so yeah that's our first challenge is trying to stop this handcuffing insecure transportation yeah i mean yeah. to be not just a successful businesswoman but a change maker and, yes and that's always the legacies we want to leave behind yes um you know our imprint on the world can make such a difference and this could make the difference too tens of thousands of children who Absolutely. are subjected to that form of yeah. abuse really yeah it's, it's a barbaric practice yeah. that should have been banned a long time ago so you know and I'm not talking about criminals or youth offending I'm talking about our vulnerable children in society who are in care mm -hmm. you know this is just it's a diabolical practice that must be stopped mm -hmm. that's having a massive you know tra adding trauma to already traumatized young people so yeah well, we should like keep our eyes open for Thank what you have to do with that campaign because it's really, you know, worthwhile and something yes. hopefully that the government will listen to. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the awards night. Yes. You, you know, you were on holiday just before the awards. Yes. So you arrived and I don't think you thought anywhere in your mind that you were going to win so what no. was it like when your name was called out how did that feel I was in absolute, <laughs> I was in absolute <laughs> shock to be honest um I, like I said I really didn't think that I was going to win and I was very jet lagged unfortunately because I'd only just flown back from the Mediterranean 24 hours before and we we're obviously there obviously two hours in front so obviously our category was number five I understand uh, uh, announcing so I was pretty much nine o'clock which is 11 o'clock at their time I was sort of <laughs> getting sleepy and tired yeah so I never thought you know that I was going to win and when that gold envelope you know was announced and the gold envelope was opened I was like oh my goodness that, that that's my name <laughs> So I was so in shock. And I think all the photographs display that really. So it's very humbling. It's very humbling. And especially this category, you know, for like I said, for children and families category, it's just amazing. So yeah, it's, I, I honestly, I, I couldn't recommend more anybody to, to join really, but the actual awards night itself was like a BAFTA nomination, you know, BAFTA event. It was just amazing. It was just just so very professional, very, very professionally done. Thank so, you. Yeah, I'd like to and thank you. You felt that sense of celebration and you obviously brought some of your team with you as yes. well. And I think that also recognises you as an incredible leader of your team, that they yes. were all there to support you. Yes. And um, 
I think you're going to get lots of publicity on the back of your award win. And you yes. are a true, and I say this from my heart, a true leader in this Thank field you. who is actually proactively yes. making change. Yes. And that makes you the best businesswoman in children's oh. families. Thank you so much, Debbie. You will always have that title, always. And I think when we do go through those rough times in our business, it's great to kind of have that, those accolades, awards, yes. whatever they are, to kind of go, okay, you know, this day might be tough, but I know that I've been recognised for the hard work that I've done. Absolutely. And, you know, predominantly the difference that you're making um, yeah. and that you're continuing to make and the fact that you are so entrepreneurial that you've seen that you can actually make a real difference in the industry and bring all these services under one roof and actually yes. make local authorities lives easier as well because they have absolutely a difficult task mm. so it's great that you've thought this through from not only the children's perspective but also supporting the local authorities which we know are run ragged with all of these absolutely so absolutely yeah and especially since the pandemic there's been an influx of children going into care because of mental health um obviously family breakdowns and all sorts so you know it's been you know it's like a tsunami at the moment so it's wonderful to, to have this award and I know a lot of our local authority clients have congratulated me which is amazing um you know it's just it's just fabulous absolutely fabulous so I can't thank you enough really. <laughs> don't so, thank me thank the judges um, and the judges and the judges of course yeah well I'm really grateful that you've joined me today because I know you're really busy and we will watch your campaigns with interest and we will yes, hopefully thank you. follow you all the way to Buckingham Palace fingers yeah. crossed <laughs> and you. you know well done Emily you are yeah. really inspirational and uh, I hope anyone listening to this today can actually take from this that you can transition your career from something yeah. completely different yeah. into making a real difference in society and become a change maker and a thought leader so Absolutely. thank you Emily Thank you, Thank you Debbie. Thank you so much.